I'm hoping to see that in the coming months, we might actually start to see a lot more people signing up to volunteer and help contribute to strengthening certain um, certain parts of the Quidditch community. But I'm not sure if I'd be the one to comment on that. I think, um, Laurie, have you noticed anything on your end of stepping up in terms of volunteering or people wanting to contribute more to certain organizations? Not immediately. Um, the thing is, stepping up to volunteer right now is a really difficult thing because there's <laughs> not really that much going on. Um, the content that we have been creating is, um, well, focused really on getting engagement. That was, you know, for me, the question, why is there so much content creation right now is I think it's, it's the only way that you can currently connect yourself to the sport and to the community by creating content and by keeping on talking. So do, have I seen an increase of volunteering? Yes and no. Yes, in the sense that people are, you know, stepping up and doing their part as in have, uh, keeping Quidditch relevant, keeping, you know, the connection that we have between all the players relevant, because, you know, you could just stay relevant in your own team and not reach out to the international community. So in that, you know, there's been conversation starters that have been taking up their part in the community. And that's important, I think. Um, but otherwise, like more logistics volunteering, well, I guess if you would reach out to them, you know, for example, Jay just posted like, hey, is there anyone who needs a specific kind of resource? And I'm like, yeah, you know what, if, if you need something, let me know, because I'm also at home, I, I'm not doing anything. So there's an increase because people are not, you know, they have a lot of free time, but like logistically, I mean, there's nothing to, nothing to, <laughs> I mean, there's no events, so. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I think that probably the areas and places such as in, within the IQA, um, you notice particularly after World Cup 2018, they had a big amount of pushing to get volunteers on board. Um, I look to seeing from them, especially in the next couple of months, certain activities and certain um, expansions, because I know that they are heavily lacking in volunteers. Mm -hmm. And perhaps in Quidditch UK as well, I think, um, is also a little bit um, understaffed as of late so it'd be interesting to see if they start doing campaigns to see if they can get more people on board mm -hmm. so far no one's capitalized on yeah that. I mean I'm thinking I'm thinking like for me I don't know anything about the UK of course but I'm thinking the um, the campaigns we've done to get volunteers those were before all of this started and they have worked so I don't really have anything to say about like getting new volunteers because of course we don't but Europe doesn't need that kind of volunteers. So I don't, I don't have anything to add to your point about that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, then looking, looking, as Jay was saying, further to the end, say when, when isolation uh, restrictions do start to lax, more competitions will be running. In my head, I see a huge number of tournaments, uh, you know, what was going to be spaced out between say early or late March, all the way through to July, those are now pretty much gonna be compacted into a July, August, September season. Um, we potentially, we could see a lot more shifting, but I'm more concerned about, do we have enough people to run the tournaments without suffering burnout in the summer months when we do see all these tournaments coming in a very short space of time, but also injuries as well. When you have more tournaments in a very short space of time, more people have less time to recover. So how is that going to affect um, from the physical perspective? Yeah. Um, I think the, the thing to bear in mind is um, I think we'll have a lot of tournaments happening, but I do think some people will be very selective about what they go to. So like in the UK, for example, uh, the only real event that will have happen in, in this summer space potentially um, is the British Quidditch Cup, which is our, our flagship event. Um, but alongside that, everything else is going to be optional. Obviously, when the decisions are made on EQC, they'll be where they are. Um, but I think what we'll have is we'll have a lot of like Merc tournaments will probably spring up in terms of no one's played Quidditch for ages. Let's go give this a go. Um, but I do think hopefully people will be able to pick and choose on their burnout. Like I know there's um, Wild Links and Campfire Cup uh, down in Germany. Like those, those are optional events. I think we run less of a risk because all of the mandatory stuff has been cancelled. Obviously, QPR is looking at running essentially a one day event, which is fine. But I, I think we'll just look at each country running their one big event. And then mm -hmm. alongside that, apart from EQC, everything will be optional, which I, I hope people will be able to manage. 
I mean, to add to that, EQC was supposed to be, I think, uh, four or five weeks apart from each other. And that's still the case, you know, like, well, we're looking to do that because, uh, you know, the date is something specific that I can tell you later about. Um, we try to keep that gap in between to, you know, still um, mimic the situation that we had in March and April. And to be fair, there were also, you know, national tournaments. And of course, like Jay said, you know, all, the, all of those are optional. And I'm thinking um, when we were debating on where we were going to put EQCD2, um, because that was a question, you know, like, when are we putting it? Because we, we couldn't know when the situation was. We, we thought to ourselves, like, okay, well, what is a good month? Like, when is it, when is a month that there are not too many fantasy tournaments and also no efficient tournaments? Of course, there's some countries like Italy that have a little bit problem with the with the dates we have put. But I don't, in general, I think most NGBs are starting their season at that point. Um, so I don't think there's going to be like a lot of like big tournaments. I think, honestly, I'm hoping that we will have more volunteers at our events than we normally do. Yeah, I, go for it. Okay, how do you think that the postponement uh, affect the uh, EQCs, both of them. In what way? Like the postponement, like uh, people are not going to have no physical activities and all what those effect? cancellation of yeah. flights and stuff. What the effect is going to be? Well, I mean, I don't know. It's really difficult to say, of course, because, you know, it's still six months. I think uh, six months is giving people a lot of time to, you know, get back in shape. Of course, it, it depends on um, how long the lockdown is going to last. If, if it lasts until the end of August, for example, well, then there will only be two weeks for D2 teams to get, you know, back in shape and start training again. So that will be, that will be a hard thing. But I mean, the effects, otherwise we ha it's really difficult to see any kind of effects that has been, haven't taken place on um, D2. We haven't even opened, you know, volunteer signups and stuff like that. So we cannot see an increase or a decrease in, in volunteers. Um, none of that we can actually do right now. So we will have to wait until we start moving and, you know, asking for referees and volunteers again before we can actually see what points did to those kind of numbers. Thank you.